Introducing myself, I'd say Dale Peterson, Digital Bond, and ask my question or give my comment. Okay, so now let me, now, now let me try to set the stage for us for a little bit. Everyone in this room knows about the critical infrastructure and how SCADA and IDS are important. SCADA and DCS are important for the critical infrastructure, right? We hear over and over, it can never go down. If it does, it's a, a huge economic loss uh, to a city, to a, to a state. It can cost millions or billions of dollars. And even worse, you can lose, people can lose their lives. Um, you can ruin the environment, all sorts of terrible things, right? This stuff must stay up and running 24-7, 365, can never go down the most important computer systems in the world, right? But then we also hear that it's incredibly fragile, so don't touch it. Don't scan it. Don't apply a patch. Don't add any traffic to the network, or it might all fall apart and stop working. I was actually looking, when I found this picture, I was looking for a house of cards to show how fragile it was, and I found this house of money because really we're talking about large losses of money potentially from this fragility. And then we also have the issue of it's highly insecure. Back doors, hard-coded passwords, buffer overflows, um, even things that are not insecure uh, because there's a vulnerability, but they're insecure by design. They were designed with no basic authentication in them, or they were designed without basic security features you'd find in your home computer. So those two things are just, you know, it just amazes me. And sometimes I think we really don't focus on this because we get so focused on our work that here we have this huge illogical situation where we're saying these networks are extremely important. They can never go down. If they do, it's the end of the world, and yet, oh, don't touch them or they'll go down. And for some reason, we've lived with that now, I like to say for 10 years, because if you think about our space, what really kind of kicked off this space, although some people were working on it before, was 9-11. So the 9-11 attacks occurred, people said, hey, we really need to worry about this, and we've been working on it for 10 years now, and we still have this I don't know if it's a dichotomy or a logical fallacy or, or whatever, that we can live with a situation where these networks are critical, they can never go down, yet if you touch them, they go down. It just seems hard to believe that we're there 10 years later. And I know some of you have been working on this for almost 10 years. Some of you are a little newer to this, you know, two, three, five, seven years, but some of us, I actually did my first SCADA assessment in the year 2000, so this is my 12th year doing this, and I look at where we are with this complete mismatch 10 years later, like, why has this happened? And I think you have to maybe, each one of us has to look and say, well, why didn't I make a difference? Why didn't, why hasn't this changed? And I can tell you, I've, I've thought about this a lot, and one of the traps that I know I've fallen in and I think a lot of us fall in is we buy into this thought that this is the way it has to be, that these control systems are fragile, they have to be fragile, it's something just, it's going to be that way forever and ever. And you're working with maybe a client or a vendor and it's easy to compromise. It's a, you might say, oh, they have hard-coded passwords. Well, if we can get rid of those hard-coded passwords, then we're okay. Now, you have improved the situation, and I'm not saying we haven't made any progress, but it's real easy to, to just say, oh, it will never be as secure or as robust as it should be, and just live with that. You'll probably, I'm sure you've had this experience either in your own company or uh, with other companies you work with, where they want to do something that is highly insecure. You know, they want to provide maybe a control capability from any, anywhere on the corporate network. You know, that's, uh, we hear that a lot. Oh, I need to be able to do this any desktop, anywhere I, am, anywhere I am in the corporate network. And you say, no, you really shouldn't do that because the corporate network is an untrusted network. And they say, well, maybe we'll put in a firewall. Okay. No, no, you still shouldn't do that. 
oh, we'll, we'll add uh, two-factor authentication, and we'll add encryption, and, we'll, and they just keep trying to stack all these things on top of each other to say, please let me do this if I do all these things. And I think it's incumbent on us, and I know this is an area that we've been looking at hard, is standing tougher to those and not compromising. And I'm not saying that we don't have to focus on efficient risk reduction and do the things that will make the network more secure as fast as we can. But we also shouldn't say, well, if I just get rid of this one small problem, then everything's okay and I can, I can wash my hands because we all know control systems are insecure and fragile. Now, we've been, we've been working on this, as I said, for 10 years, I think. And if you, I think, if any of you were to look at the situation 10 years ago and then go back in time and say, where do you think you would be in 2012? I think most of you would have thought we made more, we'd make more progress than we had. We, I'm not saying we've made zero progress, but we've made actually very little progress in securing these systems because we all know they are still fragile and insecure 10 years later. So one of the things that I think as a community we need to start doing is saying, what we have done over the last 10 years is not working. Let's try something different. Okay. And one of the things that we saw over the last year that was very different was this book by, by Ralph Langner called Robust Control System Networks. And we were so intrigued by the approach on this that this is actually one of your S4 giveaways. So at the break, you all get a copy of this book. And uh, Ralph just happens to be here, so I'm sure if you chase him down, he's over there, he'd be happy to sign it for you uh, over the next two days. But what was interesting about this book is that it took a completely different approach. It didn't talk about confidentiality, integrity, availability. It wasn't actually aimed at all at the security professional. What it really was, was talking to engineers in their language. And I think this is more my words than the authors, but the way I saw this and the way I've seen this used is that, in a way, it shames an engineer. Because engineers are professionals. And if you talk to an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer or a chemical engineer, they would never allow the level of fragility in their system that they control for the physical process. Like if you, were, if you were doing something with chemicals and you were adding various quantities of chemicals or adding or controlling the temperature that the chemicals were being developed under, they would never allow an uncertainty about the inputs or what would happen if you sent certain, if you changed this temperature or you added this chemical to it. The, the focus on what is going into my process is something that is very carefully controlled by engineers. They have set, set levels that the parameters can go in, and then they also, if those parameters are exceeded or undershot, they know what will happen if that occurs. They're very focused on inputs and outputs. And they're also very focused on knowing and understanding their system and documenting your system. I'm sure many of you have, have had this situation, whether you're an owner operator or uh, we've run into it with vendors a lot, where you ask them something as simple as, what is the communication flow? You know, how do the, you have all these, quote, cyber components that talk to each other. What is the communication flow? And it's amazing, even on new projects, sometimes how hard it is for us to get that information. The owner operator doesn't know, and oftentimes the vendor doesn't know let alone getting down to the level of what ports need to be open, what is the protocol, what are the various parameter specifications in that protocol. So it really, when you compare what these people do, what these engineers do when they're doing their mainline process activities compared to the level of uncertainty they have related to information technology, it's really amazing. And the whole focus is to understand your process better and reduce fragility and increase, make it increasingly robust. Now we have, since I, I was fortunate enough to get an advanced copy of this in the summer, since this came out, we've actually tried this a bit with our clients. And it has had an impact. I'm not saying it's going to change the world instantly. But you start 
you talk to them about their lack of knowledge on what's going on in their systems, and they start to get a little embarrassed. They start to say, ooh, yeah, well, I don't know that. I don't know that. And so it's, I guess what I'm pointing out here, and I encourage you uh, to read the book, but what I'm pointing out is this, I think, is one example of a very different approach. It might not be the right one. There might be something else that'll be better. It's probably not going to be the same one everywhere. But I think we need, as a community, to be looking for different approaches because what hasn't, what we've done the last 10 years has not worked. Tomorrow, you'll hear another example of a different approach. We, with our project base camp, you know, we looked at what's been happening in PLC security and how little progress has been made and we said okay we need to try something dramatically different and we'll talk about that tomorrow but I think each one of you should say okay what have I been doing for the last 10 years how successful has it been and maybe it's time to change things dramatically and I'm not claiming that you know this is going to be easy this is this is a hard thing but this is one of my favorite quotes from Michelangelo the greatest danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. I think you know, that's something we've done. When you think about control systems and, and the levels that we're willing to live with, we say, if we can just do this, then it's okay. And I'm, I'm not, not really comparing control system security to the Sistine Chapel, but that had to be a bit daunting when you had all that empty space up there and, and somebody said you need to cover that all with great art. Um, so big problems actually can be solved, but uh, we should be trying to solve big problems. Now another great artist, uh, President George W. Bush, who uh, regardless of your political feelings, wasn't really known for his eloquence. Um, he has one of my favorite quotes that I think wasn't directed at at control system security. It was actually directed at education in the inner cities. And he was saying that we shouldn't have lower expectations. That's a form of bigotry. We shouldn't have lower expectations for children graduating from schools in inner cities. You know, we shouldn't congratulate ourselves if they're able to achieve that. And I think we're there with control system security. Because just look at your own organizations. How are we willing to allow our control systems to be so much more fragile and insecure than we are our corporate networks or our home PCs. We have, we have just set this bar so low. We have so low expectations for control system robustness and control system security. And I don't know if it's bigotry or something, but we have to change those expectations. So just to finish up, I guess one of the things I hope here is, is we've got We've got in this room, we've got people from vendors who make ICS products. We have owner operators in the room. Uh, we have consultants. We have government organizations, industry organizations. And, you know, some of you read our blog. We're not always nice to all vendors. <laughs> We're not always nice uh, to all owner operators of government organizations. Uh, sometimes we'll point out things that they're not doing right. But I do know that most of the people, probably all of the people in this room, actually are trying to do the right thing when it comes to ICS security. And maybe you're working for a vendor and you're fighting to get, you know what should be in the product, but you're fighting the business to try to come up with a business case to include it in the product. And it's, it's really hard work. Um, it's, it's hard to change attitudes. And I guess one of the things I'm hoping for S4 is I'm hoping in hearing these presentations and talking to your fellow colleagues, you know, formally and informally, it'll give you a little bit of energy and you'll come back with some new ideas and you'll go back in your organizations and not settle for those low expectations. Because I don't think, for those of us who have been in the industry for 10 years, I really don't want to be in this industry 10 years from now if I still have to put up that fragile sign. I mean, that's, I just, it's not worth doing it. So we have to all step up our games. We all have to fight harder, uh, not settle for these low expectations. So with that, I just kind of want to charge you with that, that goal and that mission while you're here. And I will get off my soapbox now, and uh, we'll get to our first.